You are now listening to the Purpose Edits Podcast. You got to be willing to be vulnerable. You have to have the ability to self-assess and not everybody has the ability to self-assess. You don't necessarily have to like schools to be successful in school. You just have to know how to play the game and finesse it and get through it. Welcome to the Perfect Status Podcast. This is a short yet powerful conversation designed to help you do three things that can ultimately change the trajectory of your life. One, discover your purpose. Two, walk in your purpose. And three, ultimately fulfill your purpose. I am your host, Coach Vic, and I'm joined as always by my lifelong friend, my brother, the educator, Dr. Shane Calhoun. Purpose Addicts, it's another week. We back. Shane, what's going on, homie? Chilling. I'm good, bro. How you doing? Uh, I was trying to figure out a word in preparation for that question. I think the word that I'm coming to is recharged. Oh, that's a good place to be. It's a good place to be. Here's why. You know, <laughs> I've shared with you and, you know, our audience on the show, I've struggled with trying to get back into the fitness part of things. Ah. Right. So a month ago, I bought a bike. Okay. I committed to riding it more frequently. Right. And now I'm at a place where I'm riding it at least three to four times a week for five plus miles. Oh, that's good. That's good. Two, get back in the gym. Again, started off slow, was inconsistent at first, mm-hmm. but then starting to get more consistent. Gotcha. Back in the gym, right? And I'm starting to see not necessarily results. I'm starting to see the connection between this work and the goal that I want to accomplish in my fitness. So I feel recharged because as you know, working out, all of a sudden stuff start clicking in other parts of your life. That's what I hear. Yeah, like you all of a sudden, because you worked out and you committed to that, you also now got the willpower and the, the strength to go do this. And then yeah. because you do that, that feels good. You could check that box off and you want to go check another box off. And you're just more productive with your yeah. day, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that several times. You want to improve your life, start with your health and um, everything else will follow. Dope. Yeah, yeah. How about you, man? What, what word would you say describes where you at right now? Uh, uh, just stressed, I guess, just working on this transition. Well, I, I think it more than a word in transition, let's just call it that. Yeah. You know, in transition, um, headed to Orlando this weekend for a couple of days and come back practices for the also, well, actually I take that back practice for the all-star game tomorrow, band practice that night leave Orlando that weekend, come back, go to Montgomery for the game, stay overnight, play the game, day off, band practice, three days off, band camp. <laughs> so that, that's the next two, that's the next two weeks. Like the next two weeks, literally I have one, four days in the next 14 where it is, uh, there's nothing you're going to be doing planned there's nothing anyway. Planned. There's nothing planned. So just buckling it up for the ride, bro. Like I knew you're busy, and most of the time we're both busy. But to like hear you map that out is like, at what point do you like? Are you able to even enjoy those four days off? Uh, it depends. It depends because, as I said, I'm in transition. So those four days. I'm still transitioning out my old job, getting ready for the new one, you know, mm-hmm. starting to look at uh starting to look at curriculums and syllabuses and yada yada yada. Then then you know, you still running businesses on the side, yeah. got you know, break a nation working with them. So probably not. I, I think um what I decided like tonight, it's Wednesday night. Wake up, go basketball practice tomorrow uh during the day and then the band practice at night friday morning my flight leaves at 2 30 or something like that i gotta travel to atlanta so in the morning i'm just gonna take that morning and do nothing that's the plan same thing when i get back sunday try to take the day do nothing um 
that evening, get back to work Monday, then we get back because then we got to get ready for the game. So, yeah. you know, you try to squeeze it and I have to be more mindful of it to make sure I take the break. I think that's that's one of the yeah. bigger things with this job is that I'm trying to carve out more time for myself and my family. Yeah. When I do have days off, sometimes it feels like I'm on countdown to when I yeah. got to get back when to you it. You got to get back to it. Yeah. 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 And that'd be the hardest part is to tell myself, man, don't worry about that. Don't think about yeah. that. You're not on countdown. Yeah. So that's, you know? that's my goal this quarter. Um, this, this quarter, this half of the year is to be more of control of my time and, yeah. and start like, you know, I'm I'm sure we'll talk about it down the line, but life is fleeting, bro. This thing is short. Yeah. This thing is short, man. So um, we got to start prioritizing things differently. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's why putting uh, my health as a higher priority yeah. is, is super important right, right now for me, for this half, like yeah. you talk about that, that is super important right now. Yeah. 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 With, all that you got on your plate. We ask you every week what blew your mind, but I don't like, when do you even have time to find something that blew your mind? So if by chance, tell us what blew your mind this week. So, you know, um, people say you can't change who a, pe- a person is. Yeah. I, I think I disagree with that. I think you can change who a person is, but the hardest thing to the change or the thing that you can't change, which you probably can't change, but this is what you need to focus on. Instead of changing the person, change what that person is committed to being. Mm. Mm. Like, you ever notice that person that, you know what I'm saying? No matter where they go, they find trouble. Yes, absolutely. Because they committed to that direction. You know what I'm saying? You got people like yourself. You put you anywhere. What, what, what did he said in the Biggie movie? If we put you in the woods, you come out with a chinchilla jacket because that's just who you're committed to being. So instead of focusing on changing the person, you got to analyze who and what that person is committed to being and change that. Bruh, change what a person is committed to and you will change the person. You will change the person. I am... Yeah, mind blown. Yeah. Mind absolutely blown because yeah. ultimately that's the link between who we are is that's based it. on what we're committed to. What we're committed to, bro. You know, some Ooh. committed to fear, committed to anger, committed to distractions, committed to ego, committed to self. There's so many different things that people committed to uh, impressing others and committed to keeping up with the Joneses. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Committed to getting over, finding loopholes. You change who yeah. the person is committed to, you change that person. God dang. God dang. <laughs> you know what? That's perfect. That's perfect for today. I text you today's topic. We're going to talk about old man strength. You've heard of this, right? Old man strength. Yes, sir. Old man strength. You know, uh, back in the day, the reference for us was usually on a basketball court. Us young Thundercats are out there hooping a pickup game, and all of a sudden this old dude rolled up, right? Yeah. And we thinking, one, I hope he good, man. I hope old school don't suck. Yeah. And then you start playing with old school, and you realize old school got some old man strength. You're yeah. like, I don't want to fight with old school. <laughs> In the neighborhood, it was Uncle Dave, man. Uncle Dave had some different type of strength. Now, was he actually your uncle? Or is that what y'all nah, that's what they him? call him. We just call exactly him. <laughs> every time he was always unk. Uncle Dave, yep. All right. For those who may not be familiar with old man strength, how would you define or describe what old man strength is? Is that point in life where it's not like lifting weight strong, it's just force strong. Like I'm going to touch you and you're going to feel it. And it's and it's on accident most of the time. Like you shake the hand and it feel like a, a, a lead pipe. Yeah. A solid one. Like it's just grown man strength. It's a different type of strength. It's different to muscle strength. Weight chaining strength It's different. Yeah. 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 So I, I was thinking about this. And, and when we dive deeper into the conversation, we'll tie it back into purpose, right? and being a purpose addict. But 
old man strength is everything you said. And I think it can be summed up in knowledge, experience, and muscle memory. Yeah. Yeah. Knowledge, experience, and muscle memory. And what I mean by that is when you think about when you reach a certain age, you have experienced enough of life to -hmm. where now you know how to respond to certain situations, therefore Mm -hmm. creating muscle memory. And so old school on a basketball court don't got to jump with you and try to out jump you. He wait for you to come down and bring the ball down to his level. He just slap it at your head. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) And I hate old school for that. Yeah, yeah, Not because he fouled me, not because I'm losing in this moment, but I hate him because I ain't think of that first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot, we got uh Coke Murph. He's he just retired. He worked. He 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 was teaching at school for thirty five years. The other day, I walked in the weight room. He in there by himself now. He's squatting. Mm. Got got two Cadillacs and a twenty five. No spot by himself. And he's early sixties, bro. <laughs> Different type of strength, man. I don't even want to bump into him <laughs> in the hallway. Different type of strength, man. And the most gentle person you'll ever see. But yep. when you shake his hand, or he, he's that guy in basketball. He 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 going to post you up. And if he put, put you in that post, you can't do nothing to it. It's, it's, it's nothing. Bucket. He, he, I hate old school. I remember yeah. being younger. And we used, to, we used to ball in this neighborhood. And this old dude would always come up there and hoop with us. And he said, all right, now. Young Buck, I'm finna put you on my hip and we're going for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> and and no matter how much I tried to push him and body him, he said, uh-uh, uh-uh, stay right here. <laughs> I'm put you right on my hip. We're going for a ride. Hang on. You can't do nothing with it, man. Can't do nothing with it. So tying it into life, tying it into how people can identify their purpose, how they can walk in, how they can feel it. Fulfill it, excuse me. At this stage in the game, do you think you have old man strength? And if so, how do you know? Uh, physically, I still think, um, physically, I still think I got a ways. Like, I'm not there yet. And mentally as well. I still think I got got a ways like actually like because you when you think old man strength, you thinking that knowledge, that experience. I actually feel that mentally and professionally, I'm like right at the starting point. So if you you look at that, if you look at it like that, the age. Yeah, like yeah. I feel like I'm about to enter like I'm 23, 24 all over again. Mm. Where I thought I was seasoned and I and I will be seasoned to everyone around us. But there's a different level of strength that's that's about to come. Yeah. Because it's just yeah. another level of experience. You know, I'm going yeah. in this new gig like here, but like in another 10 years. You know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. I think I'm still I'm still striding. I'm still, as they say, in, in in your in your peak, your peak zone or whatever they call it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like for a while, and I have glimpses of it. I'm still struggling to accept the level of old man strength that I have now. Uh, I still raise an eyebrow when some of the young uh, employees at work, uh, when they when they message me, what's up, old school? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you one one that hurt my feelings. This was this was pre-COVID. I used to go to this basketball court. And it was nothing but high school kids and some college kids playing pickup basketball. But this is just a few years ago. I was playing on a regular. I was working out on a regular. I'm hanging with these, these young dudes, right? So next game is about to start. They matching up. People pointing who they got. I'm standing underneath the basket. The other team, mind you, my team won the last game. So the new team is coming on trying to match up. And one of their guys goes, so who got the old dude? And so, you know, at this point, I'm, I ain't really paying attention. I'm kind of scratching my leg, about to tie my shoe or something. And all of a sudden, dude next to me go, I got him. I look over. (laughs) 
I said, I'm the old dude. That's <laughs> y'all was talking about me. <laughs> so the transition to becoming old school. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're in the same transition as me? And have you accepted that transition? I think it works. I think it works both ways. Um, yes, there are some places where I feel like um, I am hitting that transition where I'm the old head in the room where like, yeah. you know, it, it professionally, I've been teaching 14 years and you talk to this guy, there's this band director. Um, he's based out of Birmingham right now. But he's so antsy. And he's like, well, look what you're doing. You're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing this. And I'm like, listen, homeboy, I've been here 14 years. How long you been doing this? Six. You know, but this is this is the beauty. And as he was telling the story, it hit me. This is the, 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 uh, the beauty of old man strength, as you want to call it. If you don't have it, you need to have it around. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And this this is why I say it's like it's kind of weird because right now my my closest friends as as in the ones that are around me they 50 55 60 them the ones I'm hanging around on a on a very regular basis yeah so whereas I may not be that old school strength I got it around me now in other circles I may go and I may be that for somebody else you talking to somebody yep. 36 I'm 38, they may be 26, 25, and they at the beginning of it. So it's like, if you ain't got that old man's strength, you you need it around you. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, and, and, you know, the term suggests that age brings wisdom, brings experience, brings mm -hmm. knowledge, right? But my dad, you know, my dad lived a rough life early on, mm -hmm. and he will be the first to tell people he tells me this all the time. He say, I feel like I am getting stuff from you that you should have got from me. Mm. Mm -hmm. But in that same breath, I say back to him what he says to me. It don't matter when you get it as long as, as you, get, you it. get it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I think that that also comes with old man strength. As you talk about having the people around you yeah. and recognizing there are certain experiences that you just don't have. Mm -hmm. there's certain knowledge that you just don't have you didn't get exposed to certain things and if you recognize that you don't have that but other people around you do that's a nice confidant in your ear right mm -hmm. to bounce stuff off of to help you to make the right decisions for you and yours so you're 100%. right you do got to have that old man strength and knowledge around you yeah if you ain't got it you got to have it around man what's the best advice you've ever received from old school Patience, young buck. Patience. Like, gosh. And it hit me. Life is, or time, is both patient, and I forget the word that I use, but time is very both, it's both very patient and it's both very hasty. Mm. Like, it's, it's fleeting in the sense of you lose it, but it's very important to think of life in terms of long-term. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So at, at, in, in both veins, and it's just like a really good balance, like what I'm doing today or what we're doing today is laying the foundation for 10 years from now. Yeah. However, yeah. I need to go ahead and start laying the foundation. Yeah. So it's both like fleeting and very patient. So yeah. I think, um, and sometimes I dismiss it as, man, you ain't trying to go where I'm going to go. So you don't know what you're talking about. But I, I would think old school would probably be that I picked up from the older people around me is just being patient. Learning, yeah. learning the game of patience. Yeah. I got several. I couldn't choose the best. Uh, most of them come from my dad, but a number of them come from different people mm -hmm. uh who who have poured into my life so first you got to play chess not checkers mm. and when i heard that the very first time i hadn't i didn't know how to play the game of chess 
after I learned how to play chess, which I recommend for our audience, Daniel Whitehouse, I know you listen to this. You keep talking about <laughs> needing to learn the game. You need to learn how to play chess. I'm teaching my daughter right now. Play chess, not checkers. I promise you is life changing, not game changing, life changing. Life changing. Yeah. That's first. Good Second, on the road from where you are to where you want to be, there's a lot of side streets you can take. The question is, how long do you want to take to get to your destination? Mm. Those side streets will still get you there. The mm -hmm. question is, how long do you want this trip to be? I thought that that was amazing. Mm -hmm. If you've ever heard me speak, my dad, I tell people he's borderline genius, borderline crazy. When I would bring him a problem when we were younger, he would say, the milk is already on the floor. <laughs> and that was it. And that frustrated me to no end because I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Everybody's heard no use in crying over spilled milk, but that man didn't say that. That man would say the milk is already, <laughs> the milk on, the is floor. already on the floor. What I didn't realize is he was trying to get me to focus on solutions. Solutions. Yeah. He said, the milk is already on the floor. What you going to do about it? Are you going to clean it up? Or are you going to let it sit there? It's on the floor. It's happened. And there's a lot of people in their life, stuff has happened and they're not focused on cleaning it up. They're focusing on how it got on the floor. He was like, that ain't important at this point. Mm. What are we talking about? Yeah. So for me, like all of those come in at a significant tie for the best piece of advice that I received. Shout out to all the old school that's ever poured into my life. I appreciate you. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's put a pretty bow on this. Let's tie this in. What's the correlation ultimately between old man's strength and someone living out their purpose? I don't know. What is the correlation? I was hoping you knew. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't I don't know. Um, I, I think if I was shooting it, the first thing I would probably say is the the correlation is the experience. But I don't I don't know if there's a correlation between purpose and experience. Um I, I think there is. Here's why. Okay. And you tell me if this has been your experience. A lot of the people that I talk to, a lot of people that I coach, a lot of people that I mentor, haven't been exposed to very many different experiences mm -hmm. and therefore causing them to question whether or not they're doing the thing that they're supposed to be doing. So think back to being early 20s, being in your teens. You coach these high school kids. What they think they want to do by the time they get to their thirties, mm -hmm. it's totally different. That, totally different. How many of us went to college to get a degree in a field we thought we was going to work in, and now we don't even work in that field? Yeah, I'm one of them, right? So I think that there is a correlation between getting as much exposure to different experiences to solidify you knowing this is my purpose, this is where I'm supposed to be. Okay, I can see, I can see that. The thing is, and I think the, the thing that people have to take ownership is intentionally putting themselves in experiences so that they know this is the end result. Like you it's said, lay the foundation. Yeah. Getting the experience is laying the foundation to knowing you're walking in your purpose. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's okay. my thoughts. Okay. Interesting. Audience, I'm curious your thoughts on that same question. The correlation between old man strength experience knowledge and muscle memory and how it's correlated to finding your purpose and walking in it yeah shoot us a message hit us up on social media email us let us know that footwork i know it's that time of the year but do you got any new footwork what's happening with break a nation uh we's jumping off new internships this month and uh we're gonna begin a, a music industry series we're Every week, we're going to bring somebody in from the industry for a networking session. So um, I would say if you got music, if you got tunes, um, drop them in. Also, 
on all your favorite streaming services, we have a motivational track. It's entitled Purpose Attic, I want to say. Either Purpose, mm -hmm. the, the artist is Purpose Attic, but if you look it up, it's a good motivation track. Add it to your playlist, stream it. Um, this is kind of where we're going now, where we're just going to, in addition to the pod, we're just going to have just our voices and our music just to motivate. Maybe an album out. coming soon. <laughs> Maybe an album coming soon. Um, so, yeah, it's on Spotify. I know for sure it's on Spotify, Apple, anywhere you stream music, it's there. So go ahead and shoot us a stream and add it to your playlist. It'd be very helpful. That's what's up. That's what's up. What about you? What you got? On the footwork side of things, um, I am working with an organization, helping them to restructure and redefine their DNI program. Mm. They've had one that's a little outdated for years. And what they're recognizing is they got a new set of employees coming into the organization that their policies were not written to support them. And those new employees are pointing that out. They're asking questions about um, uh, transgender. They're asking questions about maternity and paternity leave. They're asking questions about uh, pronouns and preferred names. And the company's like, whoa, what we found out just through an assessment, this company has about four different generations all working under the same roof. Mm. But the policies were written mostly for the first and second generations. How many yeah. organizations are like that right now? You didn't even realize that you got multi-generations, four and soon to be five, generations working in the same roof because baby boomers are still in house yeah wow yeah so wow. i'm going to be helping them to restructure that it's a good opportunity i'm looking forward to it um and yeah man it's we're growing we're growing good. over here step by step that's good man like always man but look let's take this show out of here i got a quote i think you're gonna like it it says, successful people are not gifted. They just work hard and succeed on purpose. <laughs> it's that simple. They're not gifted. They're not special. They're not doing anything extraordinary. However, the extraordinary thing that they're doing is just working hard and succeeding on purpose. That's their intention. That's what they're committed to. Yes, sir. What are you committed to? What are you committed to? As always, Purpose Addicts, we appreciate you rocking with us. Sabrina, this week you shouted us out, shared the podcast on Facebook. We appreciate that love and that support. Richie, what's up? Daniel Whitehouse, some of our favorite Purpose Addicts out there. We appreciate you. We can't wait to connect with y'all in the future. We got some dope stuff coming in, some dope guests. As always, live life on purpose. We out. <laughs>